Okay, so um, this is State Board, and we're going to get started here in a bit. It's a little bit after 2 o'clock. We're probably going to get a bunch of people still joining, so I'm going to keep sort of stalling and talking. But, um, we'll do introductions around the room here to get started. I'll be kicking off a, uh, a bit of the presentation really quickly and then handing it over to staff. And the first speaker is going to be Shuka Rastakapur. And after that, it will be Sarah Gatsky and myself sitting talking. So um, I'm going to keep stalling because I hear people coming in at 2.03. Lots of people coming in. Are you? We have over 100 and something people joining already, 150 people. Are you? So it's a popular topic. And I'm going to ask everyone to remain muted. You, you come in usually muted, so if for some reason you're not muted, hit star six. Um, you'll see on the bottom of our screens uh, email address that you can send your comments to and your questions for us, and we will compile questions that way. Also, I suppose it's possible to send a chat message to the moderator on WebEx, but we prefer you to use the email so that we only have to look at one place. Okay, so um, welcome everyone. This is going to be the webinar, um, mostly a broadcast. We, we thought about the title carefully, but it's a webinar broadcast about the initiative, current stormwater strategic initiative, which is now going to be turning into a stormwater strategic planning effort. Um, so my name is Greg Gearhart. I am the executive sponsor of this project. I am also the director of the Office of Information Management and Analysis at the State Water Board. And um, I want to introduce the team that's been working really hard on this. And uh, first I'll introduce the team lead, Sarah Gatsky, an engineer for the State Water Board. And um, with her also is uh, Shuka Rastakapur, um, who is an environmental scientist, also in the Industrial Construction Discharge Unit at the State Water Board. Chris Began is a geologist in the same unit. And then we had two, um, two regional board members on the team that were uh, representing San Diego and Central Coast. San Diego, we had Eric Becker. And Central Coast, we had Phil Hammer. And in Central, or I'm sorry, in Los Angeles, we had Renee Purdy. And uh, she was both a team member and a bit of an executive sponsor. We um, had something with the other executive sponsor there, Deb Smith. And um, Tom Mumley was an executive sponsor from San Francisco Board. And then myself and Jonathan Bishop were executive sponsors at the State Board, lots of executive sponsors. And we had a special um, assignment person on the team that was brought in, and that's Mac Walker. And he was not representing anyone other than himself, but he has a long history of working with CASCA and Larry Walker Associates. And uh, all those folks are in the room except for the regional board folks. And I'll let, um, real quickly, there are some people in the room, so why don't we um, have people who haven't already been introduced by me introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Albrecht. I'm an engineer in the Division of Water Quality. And Noelle Patterson, engineer in the Division of Water Quality. Anish Patel uh, with the Fee Branch. Sarah Fong with the Fee Branch. And a bunch of people that declined to introduce. No, I, I can't. <laughs> uh, fine. Mike Stevens, program man, stormwater program manager, California Parks. Thank you. Um, okay, so what I'd like to do is just sort of frame this. Um, this has been a monumental effort by a lot of people. Um, we have achieved, to me, um, a great outcome by having a product at this point. This is the beginning, though, not the end of the stormwater strategic planning effort. So this product that's out there is really um, meant to start the planning process. Um, we released a document about a year ago that was meant to start the dialogue, and we went out and had stakeholder meetings and, and um, we have this product. So this product is now morphing into what the next phase of this project is going to entail, which is actual um, stormwater work plan elements with implementation schedules and report backs and performance measures and what have you, all that stuff. So um, I want to thank the team for all their hard work. I want to um, especially thank the team for putting up with uh, the extra executive management oversight that was going on along this whole project. Um, a lot of 
people in charge and only a few people doing the work. So that's always a tough formula to deal with, but they've done an awesome job in my opinion. So thank you for the, for the hard work team. Um, with that, I'm going to hand over the presentation baton to Shuka, and who's going to go through the slides, and we'll come back and describe some of the individual projects later. All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's um, Sir Wander Strategic Initiative webinar. Um, as Greg mentioned, I'm Shuka Rastagarpur, and I'm going to be providing today's presentation. Um, as Greg has already mentioned, there is an email address on the bottom right-hand corner of your slide um, where you can submit your comments or your questions to. Um, this will be available on every slide, so you, there's no need to jot it down real quick right now. The purpose for today's public webinar is to provide uh, an overview of the stormwater strategic initiative, um, basically what it is, um, the steps that we've taken to be here, and um, the path moving forward. To provide some background, the State Water Resources Control Board has authority under the Clean Water Act Section 402P to um, address stormwater discharges um, or to address water quality impacts per stormwater discharges. And um, right now, the State Water Board Stormwater Program has um, the following permits, the Municipal um, Phase 1 and Phase 2 permits, the Industrial Construction and Caltrans permit um, regulating stormwater discharges. And although um, we have these um, permits um, active, the, um, the, dis the discharge impacts to, from these um, activities are still um, severe, um, they're still causing water quality impairment into California's water bodies. And so as uh, California's population is growing, um, as the drought is continuing, as climate change is um, coming, the State Water Board members um, recognize that in order to advance the stormwater um, program, they need to um, change the way the program has been um, being managed so far, which is the end of pipe type regulation. And so um, this overall um, re-evaluation of the stormwater program is basically being called the Stormwater Strategic Initiative. Uh, this is a screenshot of a um, page that we have on our website. The URL is on the bottom of the screen. Um, I do want to mention that uh, this PowerPoint presentation will be posted and available on our website so that you can use it as a resource and so that you can use um, the links and the information that's on this page. And hopefully this PowerPoint will be uh, posted on our webpage shortly. Um, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to um, kind of show you how to navigate through our website so that you know where to go um, to find our program page. But this um, specific um, web page is the um, annual performance report for the stormwater program. Um, it's a nice tool to look at to receive up-to-date information on um, the uh, current um, regulatory um, impacts on the different type facility types that we have. And so it's a live page, so as we have um, facilities coming in and being covered under our permits, uh, it's, it's going to be updated live, so it's a up-to-date page for you to look at. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, Greg, but yeah. So this is a handy tool to look at, and again, the URL is on the bottom um, of the screen. So when developing the Stormwater Strategic Initiative, we um, wrote out a vision for the program, and the vision is to shift how um, the state water boards have been implementing and managing the stormwater program to be more efficient and to be more effective and to better integrate um, watershed processes and to encourage um, multi-beneficial approaches in improving water quality and water supply. So the stormwater strategic initiative process is um, separated into two different phases. We have phase one and we have phase two. Phase one is what we're going to be talking about today, um, going through the processes of going through phase one. And kind of when we near the end of the presentation, you'll uh, 
um, I'll mention what occurs in phase two. Uh, in starting the um, initiative, um, we said that the purpose of the stormwater strategic initiative is to evolve the way that the stormwater program functions and see where we want the um, program to focus on in order to meet our water quality goals. And so we developed guiding principles to serve as the fundamental values um, that the stormwater program serves to uphold. And the guiding principles are, one, treat stormwater as a valuable water resource. Two, preserve watershed processes to achieve desired water quality outcomes. Three, implement efficient and effective regulatory programs. And four, collaborate to solve water quality and pollutant problems with an array of regulatory and non-regulatory approaches. So back in summer of 2014, about a year ago, um, we, uh, a team of both state and regional water board uh, staff went out and conducted um, about over 20 focused stakeholder outreach meetings with um, a variety of stakeholder or a variety of interest groups. And um, the purpose was to discuss the concept and the framework of the initiative. And the purpose of holding these meetings was to gather input, learn interests, um, collaborate, and to communicate with these interest groups on discussing the issues that currently exist in the stormwater program and um, the approaches that are available to address these issues. So the team compiled the issues and um, prioritized them based on the guiding principles. And the issues that were identified as highest priority are the ones that, when addressed, will help the stormwater program align with the guiding principles. Um, the list that we have here on your screen, um, the last five bullets, are just an example of some of the issues that uh, we have listed. So after we prioritized our issues, we um, used the issues to develop actions or projects. I'm going to use both of those terms interchangeably. Um, we used the issues to develop actions um, for the water boards to pursue in order to align the stormwater program with our guiding principles. And these projects will likely be a resolution, a policy, an amended permit, or a new permit, or um, a guidance document. Uh, these projects were then um, prioritized based on um, several factors. Um, a couple of them that I'll mention is basically how effectively or how efficiently they will address the issues, um, how many issues they address, um, whether or not those issues that they address are high priority, um, and whether or not there is um, great barriers into um, implementing that action or that project. And while we were um, prioritizing those um, projects, an additional effort was made to um, identify projects that we should provide immediate support for. So those projects were called the Immediate Action Plan projects. And these projects that were um, recognized as immediate action projects are the ones that um, ha actually um, address a lot of high priority issues, so they were labeled as a high priority project. Um, there may not be a lot of barriers into addressing them. Um, there are resources available for um, state water board staff to use to implement the project. And um, there are, um, and that there are no barriers um, to address them. And so, when, so when um, we, yeah. So I think that's it. So I'm going to um, let Sarah talk about, yeah, about projects 1A and 1B. Okay, so the first project on our, our list of, of potential actions that as um, potentially being, you know, something we could take immediate action on is the, the first project was, it's a set of 
three separate steps designed to recognize um, the importance of stormwater capture and, and beneficial use. The first part is to um, sort of identify what the water boards and the regional water boards are doing across the state successfully to encourage stormwater capture and beneficial use. Um, and then, and that's beneficial use with a, a little b, not the beneficial use right. water boards all imagine. Um, and so, uh, first of all, we're going to go out and, and see what strategies we're using that are successful, try to decide where else we might be able to apply those successful strategies, um, and then come up with a goal for how we might um, regionally make a goal to increase stormwater and capture and use throughout the state. Uh, the second part of the project is to identify where we have barriers, um, you know, where we're, you know, there might be a successful strategy that we see elsewhere in the state, but for some reason there's a barrier in, in another part of the state um, to see if we could possibly address those barriers. So it's sort of a survey of what our barriers are and how we might address them, um, and then taking some of those first steps to address the stormwater capture barriers. And then finally, um, the final part of the project, which is a little bit more into the future, but certainly related to those first two steps, is to determine where we might use um, permit provisions or other regulatory mechanisms to incentivize um, stormwater capture and use. Um, and so um, the second project that we, put, we indicated as an immediate action project, um, we've labeled it Project 4, Senate Bill 85 implementation. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the legislation that was passed. Um, Senate Bill 985 requires that any entity receiving um, stormwater funding in the future needs to have a stormwater resource plan. Um, and so we are actually on an abbreviated schedule for um, making the guidelines to, um, to show what the stormwater resource plans have to entail in order to be eligible for that funding. Um, so you are probably going to hear a lot more from us about that in the very near future. Um, the guidelines must be completed by December of this year, so we're moving quite quickly um, on that project. Okay, this is Greg. I'm going to be talking about a few projects too. So project number five is one that was um, identified as eligible in our mind for immediate action. It's titled the Alternative Compliance Approaches for Municipal Stormwater Permit Receiving Water Limitations. This goes to or speaks to essentially um, some of the approaches being done in municipal stormwater permits throughout the state, um, most notably Los Angeles, San Diego, and the new draft uh, municipal regional permit in the San Francisco Bay region. Um, and so the idea is to develop some guidance and some uh, template language that would be supportive of directive in the order that the state board held um, or upheld the petition and essentially directed regions to do something similar to this um, where feasible. So this would be the technical support to develop uh, or to support that kind of, uh, of an approach statewide. And then uh, project number six is titled Watershed Pro uh, Based Compliance and Management Guidelines and Tools. And this is um, this is meant to get at the, the principle that's really about uh, recognizing watershed principles and delivering water quality outcomes and how do you go about doing that. And uh, so this is intended to link some of the post-construction requirements but also um, just other program elements in our various stormwater permits to link better to watershed, um, watershed management objectives, I, I think is the best way to describe it. So again, it's a technical effort. It's a it's a discrete chunk of work. It's relatively ready to go off the shelf like some of the other immediate action projects. And um, one of the specific things uh, that would come out of this would be compliance storm uh, and how you would apply that, or I should say plural, compliance storm, um, and potentially even getting into the design storms uh, in terms of how to apply them in different permit scenarios. Project 8 is called Funding for Stormwater Programs. It's a very broad title. It gets at multiple components of funding, not only what kind of funding is available for the water boards to um, either 
provide directly or indirectly support through other grants and loans kind of efforts, but also to de deal with the barrier of um, raising revenue at many of the municipal programs. Uh, and so funding is a very broad topic here, but the idea was to explore all the different opportunities, um, identify barriers similar to the, the other topic, but look at barriers and look at opportunities, see what we can learn from other parts of the country, but um, also just what's maybe happening successfully in California that we don't know about. And again, this would be a technical kind of a, you know, maybe a technical and legal, but it would be a technical guidance document um, kind of a product. Project 13 is titled Stormwater Program Data and Information. It's an open data uh, concept, and the goal here is to increase the amount of information that's being used for management decisions. Uh, it's very broad and sort of uh, happy, you know, mom and apple pie kind of a title, but the idea is to really increase both the inflow of data so that it um, becomes more effective and efficient on staff and, and dischargers to get stuff, information, data, and information into our databases, but also to get stuff back out so that decision makers at all levels, including program managers at cities, program managers at regional boards, facility operators and managers um, in the industrial construction realm, stakeholders that have um, certain interests and maybe a certain filter that they want, but getting all those different groups um, better access to our data and information. And um, the ancillary sort of element of this would be to help evaluate whether we need that information or not, and so there's a bit of a cost of compliance component to this one too. Specifically, I should say this uh, also targeted at one point the idea of using uh, field devices by staff to enter uh, inspection and do data entry in the field on the fly so that it would save time in getting back to the office and writing a report and uploading it to SMARTS. It also facilitates sharing of information so cities and other interested parties could see what the inspection results are quicker. And then Project 17 is also um, one that's ready to go off the shelf. It's called Training and Information Sharing for Water Board Staff in the Regulated Community. Again, it's kind of a no-brainer, but it's an important one. Um, we, we need to provide ongoing, constant uh, organizational and staff individual development so that we all understand how to do uh, better compliance and what the reasonable assurance analysis really means and things like that. So this is a, a broad brush of training, but um, it's meant to help implement the program. Uh, specifically, I think the project calls out, and you'll see this in the documents, I think it calls out TMDL implementation too as a specific area. And then Project 22 um, is one that has been near and dear to many people's hearts for many years, the Urban Pesticide Reduction Project. Um, this is also a, pr a key priority for the TMDL program, I know, but uh, essentially the urban pesticide problem uh, keeps morphing and we, it's, uh, it's been likened to being on a treadmill or a whack-a-mole game, and so this is an effort to try to um, define a discrete project that can help get out ahead. Um, there's been a lot of progress made in the past few years with partnering with other agencies and entities to try to solve these problems, but um, there's still a, a, a chunk of work that needs to be done, and so like many of these projects, it's they're not necessarily innovative, um, wow, I never would have thought of that kind of projects. They're more things that have been around for a while that we um, need to essentially carve out time and resources to assign and put it in someone's responsibility to deliver these products. So that's what this one is. Okay, so on... Friday, June 26, we, um, the State Water Board released a notice announcing for today's uh, public webinar, um, as well as announcing for a comment period, which um, started on the day that the notice was released. So the comment period started on June 26. And the comments are on two documents. The first one is the proposal to develop a stormwater program and implementation strategy. Uh, in short, I'm going to be calling it the work plan proposal. And the second document is uh, an Appendix A proposed project list. The public comment period is for the Water Board to receive feedback on both the work plan proposal and the proposed project list and um, to really get an idea of whether the projects or the actions that we are recommending, um, in this case the media action plan projects, are addressing the stakeholder um, feedback that are, if the projects or the issues are addressing the um, issues that were highlighted uh, last 
summer at these stakeholder meetings? And if not, um, what are the gaps um, that are missing um, in addressing the stormwater program issues? The comments are due at 12 noon on Friday, July 24th. Um, the instructions for submitting comments is on the notice. Um, if you uh, did not directly receive the notice um, and indirectly um, heard about this meeting, I'm going to, at the end of this presentation, navigate to our webpage and show you where um, the notice and all the documents are so that you can um, appropriately submit your comments. We are hopefully planning on setting up a board workshop on August 19, and the purpose of this is to provide stakeholders um, and other public entities an opportunity to express their comments verbally to the board members. Um, there will most likely not be a quorum. The board will not be making a decision at this workshop. This is strictly a listening session for the board members. Um, this is an unofficial date for the board workshop, and so please wait until you receive the official notice for um, the date of the board workshop. And um, whether you are already subscribed to the LIRIS, that's probably where the notice will be sent out. If you're not subscribed to our email subscription list, um, I will also, um, at the end of this presentation, navigate to the page so that you're appropriately signed up to receive um, all of our future emails um, for our notices. So we will be having um, our board meeting scheduled for September 16th. Uh, also, please wait for the official notice for the board meeting date. But when we have our board meeting on September 16th, uh, the purpose is to present the work plan proposal and the proposed project list to the board members. Um, staff will be requesting for support for the work plan proposal and the implementation strategy of the immediate action plan projects so that the board members will allow us to move forward to phase two of the initiative. The next step, uh, as I've mentioned, is phase two. So after we um, receive the State Water Board's blessing on the immediate action plan projects or any other pro projects that they want us to move forward with, we will be um, developing a finalized work plan proposals, um, plural or singular, and implementation strategy to then receive final approval by the State Water Board at a future board meeting. The ultimate outcome of the strategic initiative is um, the finalized state board um, approved work plan, proposed, uh, work plan and implementation strategy. And we are hoping that every several years we can um, basically come back to this and reopen it and make sure that um, we are still continuing efforts on on implementing the actions and projects that the board directed us to do, as well as maybe incorporate new actions or projects um, as those issues arise or eliminate actions or projects if they are no longer needed in the stormwater program. I'll, just, yeah. I'll add um, that the actual reporting frequency hasn't been determined by staff. We're proposing a couple of years. Yeah, just board, a couple of years. The board may say annual or every six months. We're not sure how frequently they want to hear back, but um, we recognize that it, it is a living, adaptive kind of a work plan. It needs to be revisited regularly. And so we're proposing two years, but we'll see what happens. And this is just a quick snapshot of the schedule, um, of the phase one schedule, what we've done so far. It's missing um, the last half of 2014, um, but basically this initiative started in summer of 2014 where we went out and did um, our stakeholder outreach um, meetings. And so um, we have been developing the proposed project list and the work plan since then up until June when we released um, the both the work plan proposal and the project list um, for comments. And um, the end result is to um, hopefully propose this to the State Water Board by the um, by end, end or mid-September before moving on to phase two. Um, and that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to um, quickly navigate through 
the website so that you know where um, all of our documents are and to quickly show you how to subscribe to our email subscription list so that you can get all future notices um, from the State Water Board for the Stormwater Program. Um, starting off at the State Water Board website, I want you to navigate to the stormwater um, link that's on the right side of the page. This is going to bring us to the stormwater program webpage. And the stormwater strategic initiative link for that webpage is on the bottom right hand side of the stormwater webpage. So this link or this webpage here is where you'll find all documents, um, staff contacts, uh, timeline, everything that has to do with the initiative. You'll find the public notice. Will we yeah. post this video on this web page? Or the recording? Yeah, so the, the webinar is being recorded today. Right. And the link to that will also be. Yeah. So provide the slides as well. Yeah. So both the presentation slides and the recording of today's webinar will be posted on this web page. And um, to find the notice, um, I'm kind of hovering over it right now for the link, um, and the two documents are directly below it. So the notice will um, provide instructions on how to submit your comments um, officially. And can I? Yeah. I'll talk about the page morphing. Oh, okay. So this this page is going to become, I think, the home for the work plan itself too. And my my vision. We'll see if this pans out, but my vision is that the work plan lives on the website as much as it is in paper, but um, the updates, the performance measures, uh, any sort of status change to particular projects should be recorded live on a web page in a format that's easy for people to see. I'm hoping this provides better transparency than kind of bearing work plans as PDFs on, on program pages as we've kind of done in the past in some cases, but um, the other goal of doing it that way is to try to coordinate with, there's a lot of planning and strategic efforts going on in the water board and the water action plan is even happening larger than the water board. So there's a lot of things happening related to both stormwater and water management um, that would be nice to have well coordinated and I'm hoping that having a transparent website of our work plan efforts, it'll increase the ability to coordinate with those other efforts and maybe we can encourage um, for example, other water board efforts that are going on now to also use a web page that cross references each other so that people can see how a project might relate to particular uh, two different particular planning efforts, for example. So this page is where um, you should look for that to morph into. It may turn out that it redirects to a, a easy to remember URL, but for now it's going to be this page. Thanks, Shuka. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg, could you just um Maybe frame quickly, you know, how we would like, what we would like people to, to sort of submit to us as comments before we get to you know specific questions about what a project might entail or something sure. like that. Yeah. So I mean, we're looking for feedback of any kind. We're not necessarily limiting. We have a timeline limit, but we're not limiting. This is not a regulatory action. We're not specifically trying to get a a permit through a, an end process. So. With that in mind, we're looking for all kinds of feedback on both the written document, but um, really um, one of my personal interests, and I think the team is asking for this also, is creative ideas that would um, increase the ability to collaborate with folks. So if there's a project or a project description or a scope of a project that seems like it doesn't quite match um, your interest, but if it just were tweaked a little bit, you could see yourself participating on a team or doing something that would be supportive of that. That's the kind of information that is of most interest, I think, to us, is to um, increase collaboration. We, even if we get some staff redirected, which we probably will on this project, it's still going to be dependent upon the larger community helping get the work done. And so that's really, I think, one of the primary goals of this comment period is to identify how we could maximize or optimize the amount of collaboration and synergy that's going on. Um, and to that end, it, it won't end when we get this to the board in September. Obviously, you know, we want this to be a living thing. So if there's things that we need to change midway through the year or next year, you know, we'll change it. But we're, we're trying to use this opportunity to really frame this. We went out to stakeholders and listened um, to what their interests and issues were, and this is our best attempt to try to capture that in a work plan. But by no means do we think we nailed it. So that's 
that's kind of what we're looking for. Yeah. And then to quickly show um, how you can subscribe to our email subscription list if you indirectly received information about today's meeting, um, just starting off at the uh, State Water Board homepage, if you navigate down on the left-hand side in the blue bar area, um, you'll see the link for email subscriptions. And because we're at the State Water Board, we're going to click on the first link. And here you'll fill out your email address and your name. And first, navigate down um, under water quality and click on the sustainable development um, email subscription link um, and any other ones that you're interested in um, And prior to um, hitting the subscribe button. It's a little confusing, but um, you need to check box uh, next to the program that you're interested in before hitting subscribe. So um, all information on the initiative is going to be um, definitely layers through the sustainable development email um, and most likely hopefully through the other stormwater um, emails as well, such as the ones that are under the industrial municipal permits. And I think... Do you want to show them how to find the performance page? I actually don't. Okay, scroll down on the <laughs> sector just a little bit farther than you're at, and you see performance report. Oh, okay. And click on that. So here's the link for the performance report. It takes you to the uh, Water Board's performance report card pages, and then if you scroll down and you see the tabs across that center box, regulate is where you'll find things like stormwater. Cleanup is where you'll find, obviously, things like underground tank cleanup and sites like that. Um, enforcement tab deals with um, obviously enforcement related performance measures and then our funding and our water rights allocation and some other um, and target setting and planning and assessment TMDLs would be under planning and assessment um, but regulate is where you'd find stormwater so click on regulate mm -hmm. and then we'll see a, a summary eventually here of all the regulatory programs performance measures um, when it wakes up here and one of the options across the top will be, there'll be actually multiple choices of stormwater, but then as you scroll down, you'll see uh, a category that's called stormwater. And one of the options there is the summary of all the stormwater programs. But you can also look at industrial and construction. Why don't you hit refresh and see what happens? Sometimes it takes a second try. Uh, Does it want to go to it? Water board <laughs> website is not participating today. Yeah. Anyway, so there's the performance, but um, you can go visit that later too. Yeah, and the, hopefully this link that is on the page. And that link is, it takes you to a particular year. I, I know that um, I told you it's live, but the, if you go to that link, it'll be the 13-14 year, the static summary. Okay. Um, but if you go back to Here. the other page that we were trying to do, um, no, not the feedback. Oh, okay. Page, if you go back to the other. Oh, okay. Page, you'll see some of the stuff is live. So you'll see across the top different program elements, NPDES, stormwater, what have you. And then uh, as you scroll down, you'll see, keep going, NPDES stormwater summary. That's where you'll find summary uh, pages, including things like inspection trends and what have you. Is there a way to change years or is it just? Well, it'll be updated. Uh, okay. um, it's kind of, some of this stuff is retroactive and some of it's live. It's, it's a little confusing, but if you go back to the other page, go back one click. This is actually kind of interesting. I know it's not what we're here to talk about, but this ought to be where we start linking some of our work that we're doing in the work plan. The strategy is to actual performance measures to see if there is a response. Okay, well, that's all I have. Yeah. Okay, so we have a... Yeah. Um, before we get started, we've got um, maybe two or three questions, but I'm just going to ask Shuka to go back to the presentation and so people can see if you have um, if you have a question, you can email it um, to the email if you want to make it live so it's big. The email address at the bottom of the page, um, and we will try to address as many questions as we have time to. Um, there was a question, the first question that came in um, that I 
I need to make a clarification. When I was talking about the SB 985 project and, and who that applies to, um, I think it's important that we're very specific. Um, if any organization that has a stormwater or dry weather runoff capture project um, that will, would like to receive funding for that project, they must be part of or or have made their their own stormwater resource plan. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit about who would need to make a stormwater resource plan in order to be eligible for funding. Um, and then I think we have a couple other questions that Chris will read. Um, so we have a question on Project 13, and that is, um, this needs to build data sharing platform in-house or use an outside vendor? So the intent for the water board uh, systems is to provide a essentially an open data, um, I won't say portal, it's an overused term, but a website that would um, aggregate all the water board data that is of interest to stormwater. Um, and then that would be sort of our front page of an open data strategy for water board stormwater data. And there might be other ways to incorporate data that's not within the water board system too. We would just have to talk about that and figure out how to link to it. But um, the goal here is to in increase the flow and efficiency of flow of information in and out of our system primarily. Um, then we had uh, another question. This was general. Um, has the Water Board coordinated with Department of Water Resources integrated management program? And I guess the, the comment was there's a lot of consistency between the two efforts. So I think regional boards, I mean, the my understanding is the integrated water resource management effort is um, has a different narrative depending on which part of the state and which particular watershed you're talking about. And I think the regional board stormwater program managers have participated to varying degrees in those different elements around the, the state. The state water board is also coordinating with the department of water resources on their IRWM program in the sense that that is essentially the model for why the stormwater resource plan legislation went forward is because um, there were folks that wanted to get stormwater funding that didn't want to or couldn't participate in an IRWM effectively. So there's an overlap or a, a commonality between those two efforts that is being, I think, tracked by the, the folks in charge of pro project number four, the SB 985 one. And uh, so there's multiple state water board parts that would have to coordinate the Division of Financial Assistance, Division of Water Quality, I think to a certain extent the sustainable groundwater management folks and, and others that are working on related topics are hopefully all coordinating. But the short answer is, yeah, there's coordination happening between IRWM folks and water board. So there was another uh, question. As the um, research projects move forward, can state board staff engage California's public universities to participate? Um, sure. Uh, you know, each one of these projects is hopefully going to be assigned a champion, and, then a team. and so there'll be a team lead and then a team of water board, both region and state board staff that are working on it. Uh, depending on how you know appropriate or, or useful it would be, I think each one of those should consider exploring partnerships with institutes like you know academic ones and other groups that are already out there. We've talked to some of our stakeholder meetings have been with, for example, the environmental non-governmental organization communities, and um, we want to engage them in some ways too, as, as well as the the folks that we already have good relationships or have a lot of resources already, like CASCA and folks like that. To the extent that we can, of course, we'll work with academics. But, uh, to, the extent, <laughs> to the extent that the topic is research and something that academics might be interested in is going to drive whether that's a good partnership or not, I think. We have questions at the moment. I know we had a limit to the phone, so if, if folks um, have colleagues or are getting emails from their friends saying, I wish I could have participated, just please remind them that this is being recorded and it will be available on our website shortly.
So if there are no more um, questions, is there Wait, one? Think, um, yeah, so, so there's a question, is there a component of stormwater capture on site that is conservation? So I'm assuming that's a question about the first project we talked about. Um. So um, conservation raises a couple of questions in my head because it could mean the efforts to the Water Board's water conservation regulatory program. Um, I, I, I mean, from an academic perspective, of course it's conservation because you're serving water by not letting it run off into the gutter and, and run out to whatever um, maybe outfall you're talking about in your watershed. So putting it to use in your house in, in that sense is definitely conservation. In terms of getting credit through the other water conservation regulatory program, I'm not sure how that would happen because most of that metric is driven by the water supply users and what they report back as being used on their water supply meters essentially. So. I suppose if, to the extent that you're not watering your garden because you're capturing in a rain barrel instead, that would show up that way, if that's what you're asking. So we, we um, got another email question. Uh, could any aspect of the implementation strategy or specific action projects be incorporated into stormwater permits in the future? Yeah, so a lot of these projects have um, they have different paths and they're going to pr pr produce different uh, products or outcomes. Many of them are going to be our traditional water board kinds of outcomes. So um, there may be a permit outcome or a policy outcome on a project. Or it may take a, 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 another step. And an example of that would be um, if we produce a guidance document on how to eliminate barriers to low impact development or what have you. Um, that barrier document would be the product of the project, but it would take sort of translation and it may get translated differently depending on which permit writer or which region and what their interest is. So there may be a translation step between some of these projects and products and the actual permit language. But some of them are very directly related. You know, you have to read the, um, I actually believe that we wrote these project descriptions up pretty well in, in good enough detail that you can glean at least what staff was thinking when they were describing the project. And some of them have very clear um, relationships to permits and policies. Um, the next email question, is there an interest in leveraging the construction and industrial programs and permits to assist MS Wars in implementing the watershed-based goals? Uh, examples are post-construction. Uh, yeah, I, I think the you know the program is is working currently on well one they're trying to um, get the industrial permit up and running and then uh, the recently adopted one but they're also working on um, the future reissuance of the construction general permit I think it might be too soon for both of those because they're they're happening now and our direction at least most recently was to get the construction permit uh, adopted quickly um, so that it may not be this permit cycle that they get um, updated enough to coordinate well with watershed outcomes but that said I know that the construction general permit already has uh, from the 2009 version it has post construction requirements that were meant to be supportive of the growing out parts of the state and then it, you know, leave alone essentially the parts that are covered by MS4 permits and so that concept would already be there and it's and it's probably going to stay in the next version is my guess. Okay. The next question is how will the state board recognize local hydrogeology and encourage collaboration with local water suppliers? Um, well, before I go to that, I want to just say that we, we definitely want your ideas too. So even though we didn't come up with the idea of, of how to update the construction general permit to better support post-construction, if you guys have ideas, that's a great example. And Mac reminded me that we should be asking guys to help us figure out those kind of opportunities. Um, we depend on other people's creativity to get outside of our heads sometimes. So then the question about how to collaborate with water suppliers, is that, could you repeat it please? How will the state board recognize local hydrogeology and encourage collaboration with local water suppliers? Yeah, so I mean a lot of this comes down to I think some technical guidance and then maybe some legal guidance 
and then it's going to have to work itself out on a site-specific basis. And so what we're hearing throughout the state is that, you know, there's either concern about uh, our geology isn't sufficient for infiltration or uh, we don't have the right partnership agreements between all the different water suppliers to get the proper credit to uh, make the water uh, stormwater infiltration components work properly. Um, my, my opinion about that is there probably is some fact behind that fear or concern, but a lot of it could be addressed with some guidance or at least some uh, technical and legal work. There's, a, again, a discrete amount of work that could be done that would say under these kinds of scenarios um, we could see where driving a, a groundwater plume or this kind of geology is not going to be suitable or it is definitely suitable or whatever the answer may be. But you can compartmentalize, I think, most of that into a path that gets through a guidance document, whether it's legal or technical or both. Uh, and then at the end of the day, there might still be some components of that issue or that site-specific scenario that um, just are not able to be addressed with guidance, and you're going to have to work it out through the additional, you know, negotiate with the regulators and regulated entities to try to solve the problem. Okay. Next, next email comment. How do you see this effort interacting with current stormwater toxicity testing of stormwater issues? seems that if the goal is removing barriers to make stormwater beneficial, putting a toxic label on it will be contrary to that goal, especially when most urban stormwater fails current toxicity tests. Well, I, I think that touches um, clearly on the, the mandate and the, the staff's interest and the board's interest to start this project in the first place was, um, you, if you think about stormwater as only a conveyance of a pollutant problem and the regulatory program has to be addressed to reduce those pollutants and that's all you're thinking about. You're not going to recognize some of these larger opportunities to manage our water more wisely. So, I mean, that said, I think it, it is true that in most of the urban parts of California, there's um, some toxicity associated with stormwater coming off of urban landscapes. So, um, how we go about addressing that, you know, we, we don't want to um, put our heads in the sand and, and say there is no toxicity, and, and but we also um, must recognize that fate and transport of chemicals um, is, a, is a principle that I learned about in school, and it needs to be reflected in some of our programs so that if you're infiltrating um, certain chemicals into the ground and the ground has the ability to attenuate those, those chemicals and it's not creating a toxic situation in a receiving water, that might be a way to solve the problem. So. I think it's just trying to get smarter about this um, regulatory approach and, and not just thinking about the pollutants in the end of the pipe. Okay. We have an, uh, another couple of comments. Uh, the first one is, how do you anticipate the SB 985 guidelines that will define a watershed? I'm not involved in the SB 985. Um, I, I think um, it's important to note that there's two sets of guidelines that are going to have to come out to support the funding opportunities. And uh, the first is going to be the SB 985 that's going to have a lot of um, the language that's in the legislation, but then there's going to be another component of that that is going to be the funding guidelines themselves. Um, and the partnering of those two is, is going to get at your answer. I, I'm not involved enough to, to answer whether it's a HUC 10 or a HUC 12 kind of a watershed that they're talking about. I don't know. Maybe somebody, is anyone else in the room involved in the SB 985? I move on to the next one. Sure. I mean, I think I should just say that, you know, the Water Board will be engaging in, you know, addressing issues with SB 985, and there will be a public, um, so the public will see the, there will be some public meetings, I think, in August, I want to say. It's that. moving really fast. It's yeah. So there's going to be specific public interaction on that topic. So pay attention yeah. to the website. Um, I think that it's posted now, I so the so. notices of, of where that project is will be on the website. So the next uh, comment was, is will any of the projects be addressing water rights issues with regional stormwater capture and infiltration for you? That's another example of, I think there's a great amount of work that could be done that would help address some of this concern or fear or um, whatever you want to call it, about when does a stormwater infiltration project turn into a water rights problem. And um, I, I, again, I think there are cases in California where it may be that there is a concern about um, downstream water rights users being affected by on-site activities. 
Um, that said, I think the majority of the cases that people are throwing out there as potential concern could be addressed with some guidance, and um, both legal and technical. And so this is just a discrete amount of work that nobody's had the chance to do. We've had some people that have spent a little bit of time on it. We've got some legal opinions. We don't have any court cases that have really addressed it in California. Uh, so the timing is right to consider the, the, the discrete work and come up with the guidance. And, uh, leave the hard stuff for when it has to be decided in, in a board setting or maybe some other setting, but then most of the easy stuff can probably be addressed by um, technical guidance that relates to things like, you know, for example, downstream uses um, are not going to be uh, as sensitive to uh, small diversions of flows and, and or maybe there's connectivity between groundwater and surface water so that you're still providing the minimum flows because it's getting into the ground. And so those kinds of um, answers to questions, I think, can alleviate most of the concern. Uh, okay, the next question is a little bit long, but I'll just try to read it verbatim. Um, concerning projects 1A and 1B use goals, are you aware of California Water Code Section uh, 1068.50B, the department DWR, in consultation with the board and with public input shall process new statewide targets or review and update existing statewide targets for regional water resource management practices, including but not limited to recycled water, brackish groundwater, desalination, and infiltration and direct use of urban stormwater runoff? Well, um, I'll be honest, I'm not familiar with that section of the code. That said, I think that uh, you know the board has the State Water Board has already established a target in the Recycled um, Water Policy Resolution and some of the supporting documents for that, uh, for the st stormwater component to that. And I think what this project is intended to do is to obviously abide by the statutes and do what we're supposed to do, but to also update and reflect current thinking and current use of uh, stormwater permits um, to essentially increase dramatically the amount of stormwater infiltration. So um, we certainly will do consultation and whatever the statute says, but um, the driver behind this is to try to make the targets that we have set in California make more sense and be more meaningful for regional purposes. I think that's all the questions we have for now, unless the room has a question. No? So, um, I just wanted to point out that um, our contact information, our contact information, both Sarah and I's um, contact information is available for any future questions. Um, the, again, the email subscription um, title includes the sustainable link, so you can go ahead and subscribe to that email list so that you can get notices of all of our future um, items. And um, I think that's really it. I don't know. I just want to thank everyone for attending. We had, you know, about 225 people signed on at once. It's great that you're all interested, and we're um, happy to be working with you all. So let us know what you think. We're looking forward to hearing about it. The leader has disconnected. This call will now end.